this session, we're going to take a look at all the cool new features in Microsoft 365 for February 2023. There's a lot to cover, so definitely stay tuned. Greetings everyone, welcome to the channel, Andy here, so nice to see you. Hey, especially if this is your first time, I really do appreciate it. And if you enjoy the video, please bump the like button, it really does make a big difference. In this episode, I thought I would take a look at Microsoft 365, what's new and cool, and what you can expect during January and February 2023. There's loads of new features, and literally, you could shake a stick at them, so there's so many of them here. So this is a very fast and furious session with all the cool new features and the important things that you really need to take a note of. Now, if you've got questions about this or any of my other sessions, then please, of course, just get them down below. I really do appreciate that. And if you uh, not subscribed, then please do bump that subscribe button up there. We love subscribers. Uh, so come on and join our great community. All right, so buckle up because this is a busy session and make sure that you stay to the end because there's some cool stuff coming. All right, enjoy. So first up, we're going to go here into the Admin Center in Microsoft 365, and we're going to start off in Users and Active Users. And if you've not noticed, there's been a couple of changes here. First of all, I'm going to go into Alex's account here. And one of the things that you'll notice about Alex's account is that he's now what we call a priority user. And a priority user can be done by easily checking the checkbox here by monitoring this user as a priority user. We can then go into things like uh, reports and health, and you can actually see service health and reports on specific priority users. So if this user is really critical and really important, then that reporting, support, and health features is just gonna highlight them and give them a little bit of extra support and confidence. And the other things that are also new here, I'm gonna pop in here to search and intelligence. And of course, search and intelligence, we all use this uh, every day, every time we search for something in Microsoft 365, of course, it's context sensitive. And I've covered this in the past and you can configure this uh, to configure it with your own answers. You can even create your own customizations, configurations, and you can even set your own locations and put in things like common questions and answers that your users might ask. Um, one of the interesting features recently that we've now added in lots and lots of additional data sources. So I can simply go in here and add in m different connectors. And this is an ever-growing list of connectors. And you can now connect to on-premises sources as well as in the cloud as well. So definitely check that out. That is such a cool feature. Now, in addition to this, we've also got some new, other new stuff as well. So if you go into the support page, you'll now notice that we now have Microsoft hardware support. So if you've got a, an agreement with Microsoft to support your hardware, then this is where you will find that connector here. Now, in addition, one of my favorite new features uh, can be found by going into Teams and Groups. And this is in Teams and Groups. Now, in the past, um, when we talked about sensitivity labels, you could always add sensitivity labels to documents and so on. And you could do this, of course, through information protection in compliance. Well, one of the nice cool features now is that I can now apply sensitivity labels directly into groups and teams and also websites. So you can now see, I can come into a group or a team if I click onto the settings, and one of my options is now to go ahead and assign a sensitivity label. 
Now, you could always do this previously, but there was quite a bit of PowerShell involved. So it's really, really nice to see that this is now available. And this will filter through into Microsoft Teams and also into all of your websites in Microsoft SharePoint Online. So up next, let's take a look then at Endpoint Manager or AKA Intune. So there's been an awful lot of new features here. So recently, of course, Microsoft have added in the Chrome OS preview. So if you want to deploy Chromebooks in your organization, then this is definitely the place to go. Um, it, currently in preview, so it is a work in progress, but it is looking pretty exciting. In addition, of course, we also have Linux enrollment here as well. And this covers a number of different versions of Linux. Uh, and you can also configure Linux. And more importantly, you can configure things like compliance policies as well. Now, in addition to this, um, some really new uh, cool features can be found in the tenant administration portal. And Microsoft currently have the remote help feature, which is now available. Um, currently, this remote help feature, I should mention, is going to be a premium product. So again, you need to purchase an additional license for this. Now, something that's also been missing from Microsoft Intune for a while is the ability to send organizational messages. So you can create messages and display them either on users' taskbars, as notification messages, and so on. Though this is a cool feature, and I'm going to cover this in a more in-depth session in the not-too-distant future. So watch out for that. Now, in addition, Endpoint Manager has now provided support for group policy. Now, you could always do this previously, but it was with PowerShell. Well, the, we now have a group policy analytics, which is currently in preview, and you can import your group policy settings into your configuration profiles in Microsoft 365. In addition, configuration profiles, you can now import those ADMX template files directly from group policy into Microsoft 365. So that is really cool. So also in preview are the new update policies for macOS, and it will be definitely welcomed by various admins. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here and uh, these policy settings, as you can see, you can control things like critical updates, firmware updates, config updates, uh, and again, additional things like builds and so on like that. And you can actually control when and how the updates are going to be uh, installed. You can either install them at the next check-in when the user checks in or at a predetermined uh, scheduled time that you want to configure. Either way, this is a really super feature and it's so simple to set up and will definitely be welcomed by Mac admins. Now, conditional access continues to be improved and enhanced all the time. So here I am in the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. I'm going to come down into Protect and Secure, and I'm going to pop in here into Conditional Access. So one of the things that you'll notice is that we currently have in Preview a feature called Authentication Strengths. And authentication strengths allows administrators to customize the different authentication strengths. Now, of course, we have three already in place, but you're quite within your right to go ahead and create some new ones. So I can come in here into multi-factor authentication, and you can see here all the different options for MFA that you want to configure. Now, as I've mentioned, you can select that, but you can also create your own customized one as well. So I can create one there called custom uh, one, and you can put in a little description and you can choose which features you want to have. So are you going to support phishing resistant multi-factor authentication? Do you want to support multi-factor authentication? And again, you can deselect and reselect any of these. Now, again, for enhanced uh, customers, uh, so for enhanced security environments for certain customers, this is going to be a really super feature. And it's once you've configured that, it's very simple to then go into policies here. And we basically just go into a, a current conditional access policy, 
go into access controls and of course here in access controls when you require multi-factor authentication I can also now require a specific um, authentication strength. The reason that's grayed out by the way of course is that I've not created an authentication strength but if I had my own custom ones this is where you can uh, configure that. Please note you can read more on this new feature here and also in the little exclamation mark there as well. So that's a really nice feature. Now, just while we're here in conditional access, we also have, you'll notice, a new overview page as well. So in, here in the overview page, you can get a complete description at a snapshot. You can see how many devices are protected, how many users you've got, the overall coverage of your conditional access, which is super in, important here. So the percentage of users in your organizations that are protected. So again, you're looking for potential weaknesses here. If you're currently monitoring any users or devices, and we also have a new tutorial section, which will link you into learn.microsoft.com. So definitely check out the new conditional access overview preview page. Microsoft Exchange Online continues its journey from the old classic admin center into the nice new shiny features of Microsoft Exchange. And with it, of course, there are a number of enhancements. Um, things like groups, of course, integrate. And again, you've got the same things that you can label them. So you can put sensitivity labels on groups, uh, as I've mentioned earlier. We now have mobile device access as well, which gives you a nice uh, kind of overview of which users are, which devices or users are accessing Microsoft Exchange online with their devices. And if there are any things like quarantine devices there. Now, of course, the more complex mobile device management will be handled uh, in the likes of Microsoft Intune, but it's a nice feature. Now, I did mention the Microsoft in, uh, Exchange classic admin center and one thing i'd just like to mention is that uh, in the settings page here you're going to start seeing these new features now all of these features here these other features are essentially features that have not been migrated into Microsoft 365 yet. And you can see here, yet to be migrated. So if you're looking for something that you can't see in the portal, then just make sure that you come into the other features page and I guarantee you'll probably find it here. So up next, Microsoft SharePoint and SharePoint continues to be improved. And I'm going to just scroll down here and I'm going to come down into a website. Let's just have a quick look. I'll go into my uh, Oslo website here. And here in the Oslo website, you can see that this is a Microsoft team. And um, because it's connected to a team, I've also got additional channels. Uh, and if I click onto this, it will filter and let me see those additional websites there. And I've also got policies. And here is that uh, sensitivity label here. So uh, again, at any point, I can come in here and I can change that sensitivity label if I want to. So it's really nice that I can do that here without doing any kind of PowerShell or anything. Now, the other thing that's also uh, fairly new is Microsoft have now introduced Microsoft Syntax. And Syntax is actually included with your enterprise uh, license. Um, you can go ahead and create what we call a content center. And what this does, it uses AI and machine learning to automatically extract and classify and precise information uh, from your various websites. And this can be really, really useful for things like labeling and classification. So in this demo, I'm just gonna create it and I'll call this my Oslo HQ. And you can see it's put that side in, choose the language, and I'm just gonna go ahead and create that. So now I'm just going to pop into my website that I've just created and you can see at the moment this is just a preview of Microsoft Syntax. 
So to get you up and running, one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to need to train your AI, of course, your artificial intelligence. And this involves a number of models. Now, Microsoft provide uh, an example files, a series of example files, but you can classify files based on things like trainable classifiers. Uh, you can create labels and classifications, and you can also apply them to various document libraries and so on. Now, for more information on this, I definitely recommend that you take a look at some of the training materials as they're really, really good. So just one final feature while we're still here in SharePoint is just to mention the migration. Now, if you're using Microsoft 365 and if you've been using it for some time, then you'll know that we have a, a, a number of apps in here which are really good. One particular one for video was something called Microsoft Stream. Microsoft Stream was a third party application that Microsoft purchased uh, some time ago, and it's excellent for producing and uh, doing your own video content and so on. So if you've created any stream content previously, then you're going to want to migrate it into Microsoft SharePoint. So to do that, simply come into the migration tab in the SharePoint admin center, and we have a new stream migration tool, which is super simple to use. So definitely check that out. Now, Microsoft 365 in terms of security and compliance constantly changes. So here in Microsoft Preview, some of the new features, of course, include the data connectors. Now, this is becoming an ever increasing list of compliance based connectors, and there are literally tons and tons of different connectors. Please note that some of these connectors may incur additional charges. Check your licenses for more details. All right. Now, it's also interesting to note that any connectors that you have, so for example, if you're connecting to on-premises, so for example, for things like labeling and classification, um, data loss prevention policies, and retention policies, this can be really useful. Also, in the Defender for 365 Admin Center, we're starting to see even more tighter integration with the various products. And here in the Defender for 365 Admin Center, again, you're starting to see much tighter integration with products, things like Defender for Endpoint and also Defender for Cloud Apps, now becoming just one single portal. It's also really important to note, by the way, to keep an eye on the various settings here. So for things like Defender for Identity, so if you want to deploy the various clients, as well as Defender for Endpoint and so on, it's definitely important to note that these contain lots and lots of different settings. And just from experience, they're ever increasing every day. I just wanted to mention as well the partner catalog as well. The partner catalog has been improved and increased. And just like the Microsoft Azure portal, um, we're now starting to see a number of third party part partners out there for things like services and support. So you can come in here and if you want to get additional support, not just from Microsoft, but from third party partners as well, then the partner catalog is really useful. So there you have it, my whistle stop tour at what's new and cool in Microsoft 365 for January and February. Hey, listen, I really appreciate you stopping by. I really do. And if you enjoyed the session, bump the like button. It really does make a difference. And if you've not subscribed, hey, well, come on on board and come on and join uh, this great community that I'm trying to build out. And if you've got questions and comments, not just about this, but any of my other sessions, then please, of course, just get them down below. So that's it for today. I'll see you next time around. You stay safe. See you soon. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.